From 2008 to 2017, our office was responsible for the design of two new residential colleges at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. Benjamin Franklin College and Pauli Murray College became the 13th and 14th residential colleges on the university's campus. Named in honor of statesman and scientist Benjamin Franklin and civil rights activist, legal theorist, and Episcopal priest, Pauli Murray, who was also the first African-American to earn a degree from the Yale Law School. The new colleges house approximately 900 residents and were built to accommodate a 15% increase in Yale's undergraduate enrollment. The residential colleges at Yale, largely modeled on the academic communities at Oxford and Cambridge, are the cornerstone of undergraduate life and break down the larger university into smaller, more closely knit communities. Prior to arriving on campus, all incoming freshmen are assigned to one of Yale's 14 residential colleges and remain affiliated until their graduation. Each college has its own dining hall, common room, library, and buttery, which is a Yale name for a late night student run food service operation. As well, each college has its own head of college and dean, both of whom are faculty members live in the college with their families and guide the college's many activities. In some respects, the origins of the residential college system at Yale date back to 1917 when Anna M. Harkness of the Standard Oil Fortune first approached the university with a donation to build a residential quadrangle in memory of her son, Yale College graduate Charles W. Harkness, who died in 1916. The motivation behind the quadrangle was to provide communal accommodations for upperclassmen who, having been pushed off campus by growing enrollment, were forced to live in private boarding houses and thus missed out on much of the informal bonding that Yale President Arthur Twining Hadley and Harkness believed should really underpin the Yale experience. Designed by Harkness family friend and fellow Yale graduate James Gamble Rogers, the Memorial Quadrangle and Harkness Tower were completed in 1921. Although this building was not technically a residential college in its own right, because it did not have a dining hall, a library, or a head of college, the success of the Memorial Quadrangle suggested that comparable arrangements could be offered to all undergraduates by building a series of these residential quadrangles. So in 1930, Edward S. Harkness, Charles's brother, funded the construction of a residential college system at Yale. Under the leadership of James Gamble Rogers, 10 residential colleges were built, six in the collegiate Gothic style that is most associated with Yale, and four in the Georgian style, which is a reference to the university's early architectural roots. To accommodate a post-World War II jump in enrollment, Yale undertook the construction of two more colleges in the 1960s, which were designed by Aero Saarinen. And then not until 2008, almost 50 years after the completion of Saranen's colleges, was our firm asked to design two more colleges to complete the system at Yale. Our site, a roughly seven acre parcel across from Aero Saranen's Ingalls Rink and bordered by the historic Grove Street Cemetery was identified in early planning studies as a key development space where creating a continuous and identifiable Yale context would serve to better connect the core campus with science facilities to the north. The triangular site is bounded by two major New Haven arteries, Prospect Street to the east and Station Street to the north, as well as the Farmington Canal Heritage Greenway, which is a bike path built on a former canal that was later a rail line that stretches for many miles through Connecticut and Massachusetts. We designed the two new colleges like fraternal twins, so although they're similar in size and palette, each has its own identity and organization. Pauli Murray College is somewhat taller and more compact, arranged around three courtyards with two hidden enclosed rooftop gardens that conceal a large loading dock. Benjamin Franklin College occupies more ground area at the triangular site's apex, which required a plan that dealt with the site's geometry and also resolved a significant grade change between the courtyards and the canal bike path. Benjamin Franklin's four interlocking courtyards include two intimate triangular courts with a direct connection to the meadow landscape along that Farmington Canal Heritage Greenway. Key to the success of our urban and campus planning strategy are the three towers, 
which terminate important street axes and mark the skyline, thus bringing the colleges, these new colleges, into conversation with the many landmarks on Yale Central Campus. The idea follows James Campbell Rogers' clever improvements on Oxford and Cambridge precedents. Namely, he varied the heights of buildings around the courtyards, situating taller masses on the north and shorter masses on the south sides, thereby achieving variety and urban density, while at the same time assuring adequate sunlight in every courtyard, even during dreary New Haven winters. The construction of Benjamin Franklin and Polly Murray colleges involved combining the most advanced building technologies with traditional artisanal techniques. We under, undertook extensive research to guide our work crafting the character of the colleges and the myriad architectural details that constitute their design from stone ornament to stained glass windows. In particular, the design and fabrication of the nine metal entryway gates offers up valuable lessons about research, craft, and production and collaboration between artisans and architects in contemporary design. James, James Campbell Rogers commissioned artisan Samuel Yellen to design many of Yale's exquisite historic metal gates. Born in Eastern Europe in 1885, Yellen trained in blacksmithing and later came to Philadelphia in 1906. He was quickly appointed as an instructor in metalworking at the Pennsylvania Museum and School of Industrial Arts and by 1909 had opened his first shop. Ranging from geometric to figural, each of Yellen's gates exhibited his individual genius. We carefully studied his work at Yale, documenting the materiality, locations, patterns, styles, and symbols in order to create a comprehensive reference catalog to guide us in the design process. To introduce new elements, we looked afar to the work of other renowned metal workers, such as 20th century German artist and blacksmith Fritz Kuhn. Aided by our research, we, were, we developed a set of hand drawings in collaboration with Zoltan Kovacs, a Hungarian trained metallurgist and artist who at the time worked for Le Metallier Champenois, a New Jersey based architectural metal workshop. But soon after, he opened his own shop, Kovacs Design. Ramza senior associate Christopher McIntyre initiated the design ideas and created many of the beautiful drawings which established the composition and artistic intent. The drawings were then scrutinized, revised, embellished, and in consultation with the blacksmiths to take best advantage of their talents and knowledge. Our design team also enjoyed visiting the Kovax workshop where we tried our own hand at forming metal which is much harder than it looks and was an instant way for us as designers to gain more respect and admiration for the trade. In response to the relative prominence of each gate's intended location, as well as the budget, we established different design tiers, each necessitating a different level of complexity and detailing. For example, the four most prominent gates with dimensions around four feet by seven for each individual leaf and reaching heights of 10 feet were also the most ornate and were completely hand forged by Kovacs design. These included the Benjamin Franklin College main gate located on Prospect Walk, the heavily used pedestrian walkway between the two colleges and the Polly Murray main gate located along Prospect Street. The smaller gates were designed with simpler patterns amenable to more expedient fabrication techniques such as welded connections and were fabricated in a collaboration between Connecticut based engineering building products in consultation with the core team at COVAX. Despite the tiered system, we agree with COVAX who insists that there are no second tiered gates. COVAX and his team of craftsmen and their technical expertise can be seen in the chamfered corners of straight bars, the twisted metal strands of a one-of-a-kind door pull, and a chiseled back plate with an undulating edge detail, and in many other aspects of the gates. Each piece was mechanically fastened into place, imparting an ornamental quality to a structural necessity. Covax also seamlessly integrated heavy-duty hinges modern electronic door openers and security systems into the gates, a step not required of Rogers and Yellen. Samuel Yellen's gates 
some of which were constructed using monel metal, which was an innovative alloy at the time, um, or many of which were traditional wrought iron, um, couldn't be exactly replicated as traditional wrought iron nowadays is only available as a reclaimed material. Kovacs instead used primarily regular milled steel, cold and hot rolled, but with all elements forged by hand in a traditional manner. Motifs of local flora and fauna and references to Yale adorn the gates. These include white oak leaves, oak being the Connecticut state tree, elm leaves in reference to New Haven's nickname as the Elm City, mountain laurel blossoms, mountain laurels, the Connecticut state flower, the American robin, the Connecticut state bird. And lastly, a sperm, a sperm whale, the state mammal, if you can believe that the state has one, is featured on the Polymurray College Sachem Street gate across from Saarinen's Ingalls Rink, offering a playful hint to the rink's moniker as the whale, which is a reference to uh, Saarinen's broad sweeping roof line. The most impressive of the gates at Benjamin Franklin College is located along Prospect Street. It's purely geometric in its design, composed of a series of spirals foraged, forged from single long pieces, which is really a metalwork tour de force. The gates took about 14 months to construct, not including the time spent researching, drawing and testing materials. A project like this simply does not come together without the dedication of many involved artisans who contribute to the larger built work. We hope that our design for Benjamin Franklin and Pauli Murray Colleges lives up to the ambitious mandate we were handed in 2008 to perpetuate the undergraduate experience to the fullest by providing accommodation that captures the physical form and essential spirit of residential life at Yale. Thank you.